Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, welcome, wherever you are, whatever time it might be, here we are. It is over here in New Zealand, it's the 25th of May right now, it is 9am on a Wednesday morning, it's our regular chat with Matt time, where we get to spend half an hour or so talking about, chatting about, conversing, communing uh, on any sort of topics that might inspire some empowered transformation, some growth some letting go of old concepts that are keeping you potentially stuck in disempowered uh, modes of operation here on this planet. <laughs> Various mindsets and narratives that keep us looping in suffering cycles, pain cycles, etc. Uh, so that you can have some space, some liberation to really embrace your sovereign truth as a being. Hey, Sister Jill, welcome. Um, yeah, so here we are. I'm not sure that I have anything to go by. I'm just going to flick down here. So I put up the, uh, what do we call that little meme poster thing uh, on the invitation to this. Oh, no, I do have something here from Jen a couple minutes ago, 20 minutes ago. So I'll get to that in a sec. But anyway, I'll put a little poster up that says, World peace starts with inner peace. Empower yourself to choose it. Right, empower yourself to choose it. This is the thing with peace. Um, it's it's not necessarily a a good luck outcome, right? It doesn't just happen that oh, I'm lucky because now I'm peaceful. We have to continually choose it because distraction and um, well, I'll just I'll just stick with the track. Distraction because I can't think of the other word I want to use there. Distraction is always right. There's always the potential to have something trying to rob your peace, right? Something that you could use as an excuse for not being peaceful. Hey, Sister Susie. So, um, it's peace is a consistent choice that we have to make, despite the fact that there will always be something to worry about. There will always be something that we could be. Um, fighting, right, aggressively, or, or feel that, you know, we have to defend ourselves against. So to have inner peace is an empowered choice that we have to consistently make and remake. Um, but we, we're not going to achieve this peace if we're making this choice in a stressful way, right, in, a, in an aggressive way, in a desperate way. We can't fight to achieve peace. We relax into peace, but that relaxation process into peace is not necessarily just a, um, oh, what's the right word I'm trying to use here? When, when, it doesn't happen easily. It's not the word I'm looking for. I'm just turning the volume down on my computer as well at the same time. Um, hey, Sister Jen, Jen Funt. That is not Jen Burns. Um, welcome. Uh, so, I still can't think of the word. A passive. It's not just a passive action. Peace doesn't come to us just through passive relaxation. It requires an active relaxation where we are willing to monitor where our attention is going and keep choosing to moderate or direct that, take command of where our attention is going, not trying to control the shit out of our lives, right? Not trying to control everything, but take command of where our attention is going, take command of what narratives, what perceptions we are allowing ourselves to uh, continue with. Because if we let ourselves uh, float in this world very passively, then we tend to get railroaded, manipulated, uh, overly influenced by some very strong, powerful beings who are here trying to keep you stressed, kind of keep you out of peace and in fight or flight, right? The stress response, thinking that danger is afoot and therefore you need to uh, defend yourself against that and potentially purchase your way out of discomfort. <laughs> right? Consume, 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 and produce, 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 right? Stay on the treadmill of getting more money so that you can get more stuff so that you can try to appease this sense of not peaceful. Um, this is the point. So uh, why, am I, why did you write Matt in capitals, Jen? <laughs> An exclamation of some description. So um, anyway, 
So this, this is it. Well, and the only way that we're going to have world peace, and a lot of people think that once we have world peace, then they'll be able to be innerly peaceful. This is not the way it's going to happen, right? Uh, yes, when we achieve world peace, it will be easier to maintain our inner peace. But to achieve our world peace, we have to first do the difficult work of choosing inner peace, despite the fact that the external world is not peaceful, despite the fact that the external world is not easy to relax into right now. That's good. I'm glad it's just a big shout out. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's it's quite topical right now, right? Because we've been giving a lot of things to worry about, whether it be, you know, the Ukraine situation or now the fucking monkeypox, whatever, right? Whatever. There's some sort of narrative that's trying to rob us of the of, of the natural ability to be peaceful in the world. And we have to consciously choose to expand ourselves out beyond all of these narratives, beyond all of these stories, beyond all of these, you know, contrivances that are um, robbing us of, of this, of our natural ability to be peaceful in the world. Anywho, uh, Jen Burns wrote, does purpose really serve anything beyond a motivation for us to grow and evolve? Oh, that's a great question. I like that. Will any old purpose do? Do we need to believe in it, feel inspired by it, in order for it to to be sustainable to any degree? If everything is always changing and evolving, does sustainability of our chosen purpose even matter? Those are great questions. And so... The easy answer is, you know, I think you're onto something here. I have continually talked over the last six or so years about not putting your purpose on some big grand pedestal. Uh, I've always said, or I've consistently said that your purpose is to be purposeful. That's pretty much it. And and purposeful is in the moment, right? Purposeful can be helping uh, a, a mother, you know, load her groceries into the back of her car while she's trying to, you know, keep her children or toddlers under control, etc. right? Any little act that you feel good about doing, that you feel, oh, that was helpful. That's your purpose, right? To live a life of purpose. That's it. Of course, some of us find ourselves in the position where we are inspired into something that's takes a little bit of effort to achieve and it feels very purposeful to do so. When we make this a purpose, a goal to achieve, and there's nothing, absolutely nothing wrong with doing that, as long as you don't find yourself in a disempowered relationship thinking that this is your purpose, full stop, very conclusionary. My purpose is to right, build the orphanage, etc. Put the band back together if we want to go all Blues Brothers on it right, and save the orphanage, whatever. This mission from God that you think you've received... Um, can find can can create the situation where you now get very contracted into having to very desperate in having to fulfill this mission that you think you have um, and therefore losing the ability to relax into naturally being purposeful as you progress right because now you're so contracted around trying to achieve this big thing or the converse the other side of that same coin is not thinking that you have been given yet or you haven't discovered yet you haven't found yet, you haven't uh, realized yet what your big purpose from God is, and now you feel very lost because I don't have a purpose, right? Thinking that your purpose has to be big and grand, and you're missing the ability to just be purposeful with everything you do. So this this purpose on a pedestal uh, narrative uh, construct is a very dangerous one, in my opinion, and I think it's really good to inquire, as Jen has done here, does purpose really serve anything beyond a motivation for us to grow and evolve? Our purpose basically gives us the opportunity to have experiences, right, that feel aligned with, with something that's important to us in our heart, something that we value. Our purpose is to do things that are aligned with our values, right, what we are motivated to do. And that can be all sorts of things. It can be to, you know, uh, climb a friggin' mountain, which you don't think, well, that's not helping anyone. But it is helping people because it is helping you elevate your vibration into someone who feels accomplished. That's a purpose onto its own because when you feel more accomplished in yourself, you radiate more more vibrantly. And as you radiate more vibrantly, you influence people around you. That is motivational. That is inspirational. So there's nothing wrong with having a quote-unquote selfish 
purpose, right? To, to improve yourself or even to prove yourself as long as you're doing it in healthy ways, right? And, and, and of course, there's all sorts of edges to that. Are you just operating from your ego trying to uh, uh, overcome a, a sense of not good enough inside of yourself? But even that, that's a purpose, right? To overcome the sense of not good enough inside of yourself, even if you're doing it through an egoic means of of proving yourself, that's part of the journey of, of, of you know releasing the not good enough inside of yourself. We tend to, I look at my own journey, we tend to use these you know self-proving things until we get to the state of recognizing I'm still not feeling good enough inside of myself and now I need to go to the next level of releasing this not good enough. But along the journey of, of having purpose in, in achieving goals, it's not a bad thing. It's not a wrong thing. It's part of the foundation that gets you to eventually, you know, discovering your inherent self-worth uh, beyond achievements in the external world. So nothing's wrong. This is the point. Nothing is wrong. We're here as, you know, our purpose as divine, you know, our purpose as individuations of the divine here on this planet is to have experiences. That's it. Full stop. Right. There's no, there's no goodness, value, orientated morality around how those experiences have to be. We're not here to help other people. That's not the reason we incarnated. We're here to have experiences that naturally helps everyone because as we have an experience, we gain wisdom that is part of the collective wisdom of the all, of God, source, universe, of which we are all individuations of. So, um, and yet, it, it's it's for, for many of us beings of light, we, we crave helping others. And so, of course, there's nothing wrong with helping others. The point is, it's not, a, it's not an absolute rightness that we should help others. So this thing called purpose, um, do we need to believe in it? Yes, but believe in it in an empowered way, right? Um, for it to work, we, we do need to be inspired by our purpose, which is to be purposeful, right? But the point is, is to take it off the pedestal and not to artificially create a purpose in order to keep up with the Joneses. You know, a lot of people try to out-purpose each other. It's like when I was in the ashram, a lot of people used to try and out-humble each other. <laughs> our purpose was to be humble, right? And, and, and to do everything in the name of the guru. And so there was always a bit of a competition as to who could be the most humble and who could be the most selfless. Um... <laughs> Which in itself is just big games of the ego, um, but but you know I, we see the same thing in other spiritual communities where people try to outpurpose each other. You know, people try to do, build more orphanages or, or more whatever social. You know, and there's nothing wrong with building an orphanage. Don't get me wrong, but that's just the the cliche, isn't it? Um, it? It is entirely appropriate, in my opinion, Jen, to allow our our purpose to keep evolving and we do not need to lock it in stone not at all we don't need to make some sort of purpose uh, a long achievement type goal thing in my opinion the only real purpose that you want to have as a sort of a longer achievement is continued evolution right my purpose is to continually growing like purpose is to continually improve myself in some way, which is not necessarily improve myself in external measurable ways, but to to keep choosing to step out of my comfort zone, to keep choosing to try new things, to keep choosing to evolve, right? To, to not stagnate in what is um, comfortable and predictable, right? That, for me personally, that that's, feels like an important purpose to maintain over a longer period of time, that I'm willing to try new things. I'm willing to step into new opportunities despite the fact that it feels uncomfortable. Not because I have to, but because it feels purposeful to me. It feels purposeful to me to continue with that journey. It feels joyful for me, even though it sometimes feels quite uncomfortable for the ego to do that. I'm going to scroll back because I missed a comment. Yeah, it's just here. Jill wrote, life is a roller coaster, defo not peaceful right now as just as just as I make a decision or even start going with the flow of I'm going to try and read that down here
Here we go. Life's a roller coaster. Defo not peaceful right now. Just as I make a decision or even start going with the flow of life, my attention is dragged off to yet another complication in the way of me moving house. I try to relax into it, choose in a peace, etc. The phone just rings more and it's anything but peaceful. It's back to potential of homelessness from June to September now. I know I'm bringing this stuff up to deal with it, but I am crazy exhausted now. Yeah, I think this is very, very common, Jill. Many of us feel crazy exhausted right now, and many of us are, um, it seems, to be creating situations to bring up some of our deepest triggering um, um, opportunities. So don't be too hard on yourself. And choose to relax as best you can and trust that no matter what happens, if you are homeless from June to September, it'll be okay. It'll be, it'll be an opportunity that will no doubt benefit you because if, it's, if it happens, despite your best efforts, then it's meant to happen. That's what I'd like to believe, right? Because not because, you know, um, I've been given some information that other people haven't, that that's how it really is, but because it serves me to believe that if something happens, despite my efforts for it not to happen, then it's meant to happen, right? And I don't need to make myself wrong or think that I didn't try hard enough or feel victimized um, or make anything wrong, whether myself wrong or others wrong, that this still happened even though I didn't want it to happen. If it happens despite the fact that I've taken effort for it not to happen, then obviously it ha it's happening is going to serve me in some ways because I like to believe that my world my life is directed by higher power, God, source, universe, my higher self, um, in ways that is beneficial, even if that's uncomfortable, even if I'm challenged by that. In doing so, it helps me to relax. And as I relax, I tend to have better experiences of anything that happens, because right? it really is contraction around what we perceive as wrong that creates pain. You know, yes, pain arises from within us as a process of our purification, but if we contract around it thinking that it's wrong, then that pain becomes suffering very quickly. And so all sorts of situations are unfolding in the world around us right now, both for us personally very much in our face and, you know, out there in the collective. There's all sorts of things that, you know, don't really fit in the mold of ideal, right? Now, this is not ideally what I would plan to have happen. This is not how I envisage my world looking in my dreams of, you know, uh, a conducive world for me being happy and relaxed and purposeful, using that word again for Sister Jen Burns. Um, but nonetheless, that's what's happening. So if it's happening, despite the fact that it's not what I'm consciously choosing to manifest, I have to believe that it's part of my process of purification. I have to believe that these are, these are unfoldings that are helping me become free and liberated as a sovereign being here on the planet. And I'm choosing not to make myself the victim of that. And I'm choosing not to overly worry about it. Yes, I care, but I don't worry. Well, I do worry, but I'm, I, I'm consciously choosing not to worry too much, whatever too much is, right? Yeah, of course, I, have, I catch myself in thoughts of worry about things, and then I have to stop and do my practice. I have to stop and take some breaths. I have to stop and remind myself that worrying about this isn't helping, that I'm actually you know, reinforcing these vibrations, and I have to consciously choose to move my, my mentality somewhere else. I have to consciously choose to relax my body, to relax my emotionality, the, the anger I'm feeling, or the sadness that I'm feeling, or the frustration that I'm feeling, the stress that's amassing in my body as I worry about situations that generally I'm not in control of, right? So um, this is it. This is the practice, and it is intense right now, and it seems that there's more than we can cope with right now, and it does feel very heavy right now, which can be... Um, uh, can be not diagnosed, what's the friggin' word? Contrived at, not contrived, that's not the right word. It can feel like exhaustion, right? This, this heaviness that we're perceiving right now can easily be diagnosed by itself as I'm exhausted. I'm crazy exhausted right now. Um, yeah, and to a point you are because we're worrying about all of this shit that's going on around us and we're having an internal 
a purge of a whole heap of density inside of ourselves, which feels very heavy and draining and is requiring a lot of rest on our part to move through these experiences, right? And it's requiring us and it would be helpful for us to do a lot of practices that help us consciously relax. Deep breathing practices, meditation practices, out in nature practices, uh, eating good food, self-care practices that help us move through this stressful time on the planet right now, whether it's a very personal stress case, like having to move house, or whether it's a more social stress case, like, you know, we're all being locked down yet again for some stupid reason. So, um, yeah, life is a roller coaster. <laughs> uh, that's where we're up to. Anything else, my friends? Hit me up. I'm here to, to hit a, uh, I'm here to serve. I guess we're creeping towards a new moon again. I'm trying to think it was Monday week that we had the full moon. So I guess we're five or so days off, off new moon. I don't know what anything about it. Um, other than, you know, it's another cycle starting. And I think uh, I'm, I'm, I'm hopeful <laughs> that in the closing of this current cycle, which has had an eclipse in it, etc., is um, that we'll get a bit of relief. Jen wrote, I'm hearing, what I'm hearing is there is no rush, no pressure, that you can't do it wrong and just continue to stay regulated present and listening. Exactly, Jen, exactly. There is absolutely no rush to find a bigger purpose. Your purpose is, as you just described at the bottom, basically to stay happy, regulated, present and listening, right? In, uh, happy and aware of your experience of life, right? To, to stay awake and, you know, not to put that awake thing on too high a pedestal either. Um, just yeah, I, I think um, I think far too many people create far too much stress trying to a discern what their purpose is and two then to achieve this thing that they believe is is purpose right and not enough time just relaxing into the natural flow of life and being purposeful in what presents in the moment. Uh, Susie wrote. Right on the money again, Matt. I love the way you describe the heaviness and how to deal with it. Perfect as usual. Yeah, it, it's it's pretty basic, really. You know, the, I've been talking the same the same dialogue for many many years now, and it seems like I'm a bit of a broken record sometimes to myself, and it seems like I'm not really adding much to the conversation. But I recognise for myself, I need to be continually reminded. So it's probably the same for most people. Continually reminded of the same basic stuff is what helps us get to um, get to, to continue with the process of, of our evolution. There's no real uh, goal, right? As I wrote on my my, my notes here, <laughs> the proverbial back of the envelope. I don't know, I can't read it. But anyway, I'm going to talk backwards anyway. But yeah, completion is, elus is elusive, right? Completion continues to be elusive. Our mind loves this idea that we're going to complete something, you know, and that could be our purpose or that could be achieving our happiness or our evolution or getting over our discordances, whatever that might be. It might be a physical illness or condition, it might be a mental, you know, narrative frame, not good enough, abuse, leftover trauma, etc. This uh, one day I'm going to be complete with that and then I'll be happy, right? That, that, that level of completion tends to continue to be elusive. And um, for my part, one of my greatest uh, aids in doing this life in a, in a happier, more relaxed way is letting go of the idea that I need to complete stuff before I can have the reward, right? I don't need to clear the hurdle before my life is going to get better. Life gets better with every breath that I choose to believe that life is getting better. And I don't need to finish with uh, healing my low self-worth. I don't need to finish with releasing the trauma from some childhood abuse, etc. I don't need to finish with finding my purpose and then completing my purpose or uh, establishing my purpose. Right? I don't need to complete any of these perceived tasks. I don't need to complete 
my realization process or my ascension process or my, you know, whatever process, my forgiveness process, right? I don't need to complete forgiving things that have gone wrong in my life. I don't need to completely forgive myself. There's no complete. It's it's bullshit. We live in an infinite universe. There's no, in, in, in When you're living in infinity, there is no 100% of anything because there's always more. That's exciting. There's always more. You know, there's no there's no 100% on joy. There's no 100% on happiness. There's no 100% on love. Wherever you are, there's always more. There's always more. And it's the same in the other direction, right? We're never 100% clear of any experience that we've had in the past. Yeah, we get to the point where it no longer interferes with what we're doing, but it's still there to a degree. If we go looking, we can find anything. This is the truth because we're connected to everything. And so, um, you know, another great saying is what you look for, you will find. So if you're looking for more trauma to heal, you'll find it. There's no problem there. But if you get to the stage where you think, I don't need to keep working on finding traumas to heal, then you can live more ex- expansively. And when a trauma does come up, you can heal it, right? Or you can go through the process that you've used to find peace with that particular trauma that's just been triggered. But the idea that you need to hunt it all out and get rid of it all first, and then you can be happy because you no longer have to worry about trauma. You can stop worrying about trauma right now, even though you are still being influenced by trauma right now. You stop worrying about it, and you assume that you have the tools to keep healing yourself or elevating yourself or evolving through the arising of trauma. And, and when I talk about trauma, this could be anything, right? Anything that's, you know, pervasive in your field. Um, this is the point. Jill wrote, I need reminding daily too. I'm going to go singing tomorrow and have my phone switched off. Yeah, exactly. It'll keep all this stressful stuff. Yeah. Maybe I'll resolve better when I stop looking at it in in micro detail. I 100% encourage you to let go of micro detail. Yeah. Susie, Susie wrote, bring it back to basics is so important right now. Yep. Definitely, definitely, definitely beneficial to continue to bring it back to basics. It It is naturally complicated the world right the, the the level of entanglement that we're existing in is mind-blowingly complex right the interactions that we've had in the past because you're an infinite being right so as an infinite being how many relationships have you had in the past infinite right so the amount of influence from an infinite number of relationships you've had in the past is also quite a large <laughs> right so the 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 level of entanglement is massive. And yet, don't worry about that because we're all in the same boat. The point is, the progression through all of this entanglement is relatively simple. It it basically comes down to relax and allow the process to continue to unfold because you don't need to completely heal all of these infinite number of entanglements for you to live a purposeful, happy, joyful experience here on the planet. The entanglement is part of the experience. We don't need to fix it. Right, all of all of the stuff that we're dealing with, you know, fragments of trauma and pain. We don't need to be free of all of that. We don't need we don't need to be devoid of all of that to become free of that. Right. So, becoming free of our pain is becoming free of the influence of the pain. Not to have the pain necessarily go away and not be not be able to be found in your field. That's the point. Right. It's our liberation, our freedom is not the absence of all of these pains and sufferings and traumas and indoctrinations and stories and entanglements that we have. Our freedom and our liberation is the ability to basically just expand out of all that that stuff while it's still there, right? So when I talk about, oh, you're just releasing that, you're not necessarily taking the energy out of your field and putting it somewhere else. That's I know that's how we conceptualize release, but what we're really talking about when we say, oh, you're just releasing that energy is you're releasing the meaning that that energy has over you. You're releasing the influence that that energy has over you. You're releasing the connection you have with that trauma. So the releasing process doesn't necessarily feel like something's just been taken out of your field and put over there. 
it's basically your ability to expand out of being overly influenced by these energies in your field so that you can choose, right? Because this is what life's all about. It's about making choices which lead to experiences, right? In a conscious way. So you can choose consciously what you're going to do. You can consistently be conscious about how you're living your life rather than to allow these energies that are in your field to keep influencing you, railroading you, putting you into autopilot where you're just reacting to all of these stimuli, right? Stimuli comes up in the world, you see something, you react in a certain way because there's an energy still in your field that's provoking that reaction. That is living a, 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 a controlled or a sleep or a sub whatever life, right? But we're we're all going to do that to some degree. It's just a matter of how much of that is playing out. We will all get triggered from time to time. We'll all make habitual choices from time to time. We'll all, we, we'll all react to life at certain times. But it's a matter of can we increase the the percentage of how much consciousness we're bringing to our choice, how many choices we're making from a real conscious awareness of the moment rather than from a reaction of stuff that's happened in the past. And it's just a matter of slowly but surely increasing that quotient. Um, not that we need to measure it because, the, again, we're infinite beings, so there's no particular percentage that we can actually measure, but we can continue to make improvement with how conscious we are being. And that's just a matter of doing practices that help us ground into ourselves to stay relaxed. Because once we go into stress, we get very, very reactive, right? Anything just triggers us and we go down the easiest path, right? We're not very conscious when we are stressed, we are much more reactionary and much more externally focused. That's happened right. Jump on it, fix it, make it go away, avoid it, run away. Fight it or flight it, right? Freeze or fawn. Um, but when we're, when we're more relaxed and we have the capacity to be more conscious and to inquire, oh, I really feel to do this right now. Is that for my best? Is that for my best or is this just a influence from a past trauma that's in my field or a past memory that's being triggered by this current situation. We can be much more conscious about how we're living our life and therefore we start living a life that yields more beneficial experiences for us because when we're conscious, we can have new experiences. When we're reactionary, we tend to just repeat experiences over and over and over and over and over <laughs> right, until we just go, ah, I can't people. Right, we have a breakdown to break through because we've got stuck in a loop that just wears us thin, right? That's And again, it's, that's not wrong. That just puts us in a space where we get, where the pain gets significant enough that we choose, choose to make change, right? That's the point. When the pain gets significant enough, you know, pain is a great motivator. Never, never begrudge pain that's arising in your life, right? I'm not saying go looking for pain just to roll in it for, for fun. But when pain arises, understand that it is motivating you to do something, is motivating you to look at what's inspiring this pain. And so, you know, people, you know, we've been trained in our modern society to to judge pain as wrong very, very quickly without without inquiring as to why it's here. And not why is it here to find something to blame it on externally. Oh, this went wrong. Or, oh, the government hasn't looked after me. Or, oh, you know, my doctor's incompetent and now I'm in pain, etc., etc. Um, right? Very, We're very quick to want to blame it on someone else and not really take responsibility for pain is arising within me because I am have to be. If pain is arising, then there is something out of balance in my field, whether that's, you know, expressing itself physically or whether it's emotionally, mentally or, or energetic, you know. And again, you're not wrong for being out of balance. This this is a natural occurrence of having experiences that may have been hard and traumatic, um, leaves it out of balance. And, and But we have the opportunity to heal it. And that's what the pain's coming up to help us realize that. And again, again, it's important that we don't get too mentally analytical on trying to work out exactly what's wrong, what exactly is out of balance. For me, it's enough to recognize this pain is a blessing. I'm choosing to receive the blessing of this pain and I'm choosing to allow it to motivate me to progress. You know, because when you relax out of fighting against the pain, then naturally aspects of ourselves, higher aspects of ourselves can help things evolve in our field. Anyway, as per usual, I'm going over time with a little rant. Um, much love to you all. Hey, Sister Carolina. Hey, Brother Rich. Hey, everyone else. I know lots of names scrolled up my screen. And Diane, um, I didn't... Shout out to everyone. Um, you, 
Jill wrote, I caused one Devon estate agent. I'll probably read it down here. God, I've got a million notifications. I caused one Devon estate agent to laugh with my reply to her question of if I'm still seeking a new home. I said, I need a house that is easy that is as easy to find as rocking horse droppings, especially as it is must have no chain to slow its progression. I said I was like I said it was like seeking a unicorn. So I asked her to let me know if she saw one of them galloping down the road. She laughed and said she'd keep an eye out for them. Yeah. <clears throat> Perfect. So um yeah, it's important to laugh as well. And it's important not to create too many stories about how hard it's going to be to find a house, Jill. Just just trust that the right house will come. And if houses aren't flowing into your space, then it's not the right house yet. Right? You have to trust. You've chosen to 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 you know move ahead and get, get something that's better. So um, if what you had before fell through, then it wasn't the best one for you. And your job is just to stay faithful and keep trusting that the universe will provide if you keep doing the work, right? Keep showing up. Don't allow yourself to go into conclusion. Of course, make preparation for the fact that you might have to spend some time in between houses, and that's not the end of the world. Um, you will cope with whatever comes, but trust that the best outcome is arising for you. Your job is just to keep putting it out there and just to keep showing up. Anyway, friends, much, much love. I will speak to you again next week. Uh, take it easy. If you need any help, if you want uh, some more personal guidance from us, then please feel free to reach out. Of course, of course, Jill, get others involved and talk to as many estate agents as you can and tell them exactly what you are looking for um, because that's how we, that's how we progress. We, we allow others to help us. So, and that's what they're here to do. They want to help you, right? Because they want to earn a commission. So, so tell them, let them know, right? Let the, let the best agent find the perfect house for you. Um, much love, friends. Reach out if you need some help. Either send me an email or reach out on Facebook um, and I'll help you as best I can. Bye for now. Bye-bye.